The Munich-based startup DeepDrive has developed an innovative dual-rotor electric motor, and it's causing quite a stir in the industry. I recently met some of the team at a conference, and I wanted to share what I found, including some of the incredible technical details behind this design. There are a few great innovations here, but the one that really brings this all together lies in the windings. As always, I respect your time, so let's get straight into the engineering. I'm Ryan Innes, and this is a Xeroth Deep Dive. To give a little context before looking further into the deep drive system, the type of motor used in most electric vehicles is a radial flux permanent magnet motor. And it uses magnets and copper coils to create spinning motion. The stator stays stationary and the rotor spins. This happens when a three-phase alternating current flows through the stator's copper coils. This electricity creates a rotating magnetic field, and that pulls the magnets in the rotor around. It's called radial flux because magnetic forces move outwards from the center, like the spokes on a wheel. Deep Drive's motor is somewhat similar to this, but incorporates some very important differences. As I mentioned, the main one is the fact it's a dual rotor system, which is a key departure from the traditional single rotor design. We have seen dual rotor motors before, like the ones from Yasa, but they're generally axial flux, not radial flux, and that makes manufacturing a lot more difficult. If we look inside the deep drive system, we can see that there is an inner and outer rotor. These rotors are mechanically linked, so they run together in unison, acting almost like the bread in a sandwich around the stator, which is situated between them. This dual rotor sandwich design significantly increases the amount of surface area you have between stator and rotor, because there's two of them, and that is really useful for getting more torque out of the motor. To truly appreciate the innovation of this dual rotor machine, we need to compare it to a standard single rotor design. In a standard motor, you have something called a yoke. It's a relatively large component made from metal that you see on almost all automotive motors, and it does a few very important things. Firstly, it provides mechanical and structural stability, holding everything in the stator together. Secondly, the steel in the yoke helps connect the magnetic field loops. You can think of it as providing a path that links the north pole of one magnet to the south pole of the next one, helping to pull the rotor around. That's definitely an oversimplification, but the important thing to remember is that that yoke helps create and connect the magnetic loops from north to south pole. And finally, the yoke carries heat away from the hot copper windings, allowing the motor to stay cool with the help of some flowing coolant. However, despite all of these useful functions, the yoke is still a passive component, which adds weight without adding power or torque to the motor. Also, in a dual rotor motor like the one from Deep Drive, a yoke would prevent one of the rotors and stators from effectively working together, because that chunk of metal from the yoke would create extra distance between the rotor and stator, weakening their magnetic interaction. So for these reasons, Deep Drive wanted to remove the yoke. But they still needed to make sure that the motor was strong enough structurally, could get rid of excess heat from the copper windings, and could also guide and connect the magnetic fields effectively. Thankfully, the dual rotor topology actually solves a lot of those magnetic field problems. This is because the north pole of a magnet on one rotor connects directly with the south pole of a magnet on the opposite rotor. This diagram shows it nicely in an axial flux machine, where you can see the magnetic field loops flowing between magnets in each rotor therefore not needing the yoke to complete the loops. There is also this image from their patent, which shows how the magnetic loops connect from one side of the rotor to the other. This is great and solves a lot of the logistics relating to the magnetic fields. However, you may remember that the yoke also provides mechanical stability and helps control the motor's heat. 
Therefore, in the yokeless design, we need a way to solve these problems too. This is where DeepDrive's next big innovation comes in, and it's arguably the most important one. The secrets are all in the copper windings of the stator. And we'll look at these in just a minute after a quick message from today's sponsor, 8sleep, who are no strangers to efficiency and innovation. You've probably already heard of 8sleep by now, the company dedicated to great sleep. Well, they've just launched the new Pod 5, which is a smart mattress cover that goes directly onto your existing mattress. By automatically regulating your temperature at night, it helps you get up to a full hour of extra quality sleep each night, boosting your energy so you can do the things that you love. It also controls the temperature of each side independently in case you and your partner like different temperatures. The pod cleverly regulates your body's sleep cycles with the ability to cool down to just 55 degrees Fahrenheit or warm up to 110 Fahrenheit. So instead of heating or cooling your whole house, you can just control the temperature of your bed, which is much more efficient and I wish I had it in this hotel room because it's been absolutely freezing. But it's not all just about temperature, as the built-in sensors monitor your sleep stages, heart rate variability, respiratory rate and more, meaning you can track your sleep without wearing any devices. This data ties into their preventative health tracking system, which can update you on things like disrupted breathing or abnormal heartbeats. Head over to 8sleep.com slash Xeroth and code Xeroth will be valid for $700 off Pod5 Ultra and $500 off Pod5 Core, which is a huge additional discount to finish your year well. You also get 30 days to try it at home and return it if you don't get on with it. However, I think you will and your body will thank you for the investment in better sleep. Okay, now back to Deep Drive's big innovation that makes their whole motor possible. This innovation is their special torsion resistant windings, which use a novel patented cross winding structure. When I spoke to co-founder and chief engineer Alexander Rosen, he stressed that this feature truly unlocked the motor's design. Hi Ryan, so uh, I'm Alex, co-founder and chief engineer at DeepDrive. And uh, what we see here is our dual rotor radial flux electric machine. The heart of the technology, or the most important part of the technology, is our winding. And the winding is made from copper bars and it's aligned in a torsion stiff way. We use what we call a truss-like structure. And by using this truss-like structure, we enable the winding or the copper itself to transfer the torque out of the machine and to fix it in the housing. And at the same time, the generated heat is transmitted in the axial direction also to the end shield. I want to focus in on what Alex said here because he mentions structural stability and heat flow, which we know are both very important considering there's now no yoke. Also, sorry if I pronounced your surname wrong. I'm not, not so good at this. The torsion resistant windings are crucial, with magnets on each side from the rotors pulling in different directions, the magnetic forces want to twist the windings in complex ways. Without a yoke to hold everything together and rigid, these windings have to be extremely strong to keep their shape and work reliably. Part of the fix for this is that instead of using wires for the copper windings, they use conductor bars. These bars are used to create a kind of truss system that supports itself against the magnetic fields that are trying to warp them. One end of the copper bars is also attached to the motor's housing. This attachment helps structural rigidity, but also is crucial for heat rejection, as heat flows through these thick copper bars into the housing, which contains the coolant fluid. This means that the rigid copper windings solve both the heat rejection problem and the structural rigidity problem that came about from removing the yoke, which is so cool and very clever. I think these windings are easy to underestimate, but they are truly the key that unlocks this technology. The patent images for this also look really cool, and if Deep Drive put these on a t-shirt or a poster, I would definitely buy it. But then again, I am a massive nerd, so there is that.
Beyond making the motor work, an extremely important feature of these windings is that they are easy to manufacture and can therefore be used in mass-produced vehicles. I want to dive into this manufacturing topic a bit more, so hopefully in the not too distant future I can get out to Deep Drive's workshop and see how these things are actually built. The motor also comes in a few variations. The main example they've displayed is an in-wheel system, but they also have a central drive unit that would sit inside the car. I've seen quite a lot of discussion about how adding weight to the wheels, aka unsprung mass, can negatively affect the performance of a car. However, in practice, I think this issue tends to be smaller than expected, thanks to lighter in-wheel motors than previously were possible, and improved suspension designs. We've even seen Renault choose an in-wheel motor for the sports version of their new Renault 5 Turbo 3E. And people who have participated in Deep Drive's test drive have also been very positive about the handling and performance. For those who love the numbers, the performance figures speak for themselves, with a high torque of over 2,000 newton meters in a package weighing just 34 kilograms and a peak power of 180 kilowatts. With all the power going directly to the wheels, this minimizes losses and reduces the number of components, potentially making the vehicle cheaper too. The yokeless design of this motor also improves the efficiencies at low torques, and because cars often operate at low load in real world conditions, this could improve the overall efficiency by a stated 20% across a real drive cycle. One of my initial concerns about this motor was that there'd be a large increase in magnetic material usage because you have two rotors instead of one, and with magnet prices being crazy, this is a big concern for automakers. However, because deep drive are using the magnets more efficiently or effectively, it means they can actually half the amount of magnetic material used. I was actually surprised at how thin the magnets were when I was looking at the rotor at the conference. There's also roughly a 80% reduction in iron due to the yokeless design, and according to deep drive, all of this leads to a 30% lower cost per newton meter of torque. Overall, these motors, whether they're in-wheel or central drive units, provide benefits in efficiency, cost, and material savings. And that's why partnerships have been coming thick and fast, including with BMW and many other global automakers. Deep Drive's plan is to begin small-scale series production by 2026 and transition to large-scale mass production by 2028. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It's free and helps the channel a lot. You might also like some of my other videos, like this one on Ferrari's new electric motor. And as always, thanks for watching.